Keeping Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh cards sealed isn't worth it. Part 1. It has generally been a fact since the inception of collectible card games and printed cards that 99% are worthless and have no inherent value whatsoever. Or it is so low pennies worth which is the same difference. There has always been exceptions as a top tier of the cardboard world. MTG Alpha Starter Brick. Pokemon First Edition Shadowless Booster Box, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legend of Blue Eyes First Edition Booster Box, Booster Box, Magic the Gathering Alpha Cards, Pokemon First Edition Shadowless, the famous Tobacco Basketball Cards, Pokemon First Edition Shadowless, the famous Tobacco Baseball Cards, Honus Wagner, various others throughout history. Now, it's September 2022, almost every single product released, MTG, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Vice Swords, MetaZoo, Flesh and Blood, that has been released in the last year, has actually lost value. Pokemon Booster Boxes retail for $143.64, $399 times 36 You can find Chilling Rain, Battle Styles, Fusion Strike all day for $98 a box on eBay, TCG Player, etc., various other cardboard selling websites. Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Collector Boxes came out swinging with essentially a serialized cards. Yes, it doesn't have an actual number. That is so incredibly rare, being valued over $1,500. The most expensive raw card released by Wizards of the Coast in the last few years with very few rivals only being Vice Wars signature cards, also incredibly rare and not many for sale on the open, open market, some of which can fetch upwards of $1,500. I have seen eBay stores with $50,000 in sales and singles alone in 30 days, with absolutely bonkers with these cards averaging from $700 to $1,500 range. So, what has changed? In 2022, recession, oil, crypto, social media, bear market, product fatigue, time, outlook overall, with everyone having to raise capital to stay afloat in today's trying times, people are not parking as much money into collectibles as they used to. Costs going higher and higher. Product will be sold at a loss just to generate capital to keep the lights on. The cardboard world is a very different experience today than the early 2000s or the mid to late 90s. Back in the early 90s, training card games, video games, and other items were looked at as unproven. Of course, there has always been people that have stayed the course since the inception. Various LGSs, local game stores, collectors, or anyone that has simply enjoyed the experience, the nostalgia, memories with the cards in any way, shape, or form. With the advent of smartphones and Google search engines, everybody is a click away from a worldwide database of knowledge consisting of brands, prices, sales, history, general discussion, forums, etc., etc. There are... There have been certain items in Pokemon and Magic the Gathering that have stayed the same price for nearly the entire lifetime. It wasn't until recently that a lot of these products had spiked in price. One of the most important things to remember with the sealed product that you can convert the boxes and packs to raw singles slash graded cards, but you cannot convert singles back into sealed boxes. Every vintage booster, box, and pack of Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and any other card game that is open, the population of the sealed product gets smaller and smaller, thus tipping the scale, the balance, even further towards sealed product being more stable and generally less affected by market changes. The population of singles and a set may be in a surplus, which in turn will affect graded card prices, thus making the market saturated, but overall, the sealed product price is on a separate playing field. And again, that brings us back to the present day. 
with so much Pokemon product out in the market, it seems like every Walmart or car store is overloaded with Pokemon product at retail, with most stores selling only at a minuscule profit. The question is asked, what is the best Pokemon product to open? What is the best Pokemon products to keep sealed? There are many factors that go into that question, being number one, popularity, demand, people will pay above MSRP, MSRP retail, print runs, number two, for the supply, people will pay above MSRP retail due to fear of missing out, and of course, number three, expected value, EV, meaning how much value you can expect to get out of a single, out of the single cards after opening a booster box. Here are a couple examples of products released in the last 12 to 24 months. Some have actually lost considerable value since their release by dropping as much 20 to 30 percent. Fusion Strike, Chilling Rain, and various others released at MSRP, which at the time was about $144. Now these boxes can be bought in bulk for around $90 to $110, depending on taxes and shipping. It is an ever-changing landscape in the cardboard world. There have been very few products that have been released lately that have actually sold for more than MSRP at pre-order. Some of these items are the Celebrations, UPC, the Flareon, Vaporeon, Jolteon, VMAX, Premium Collections. There are two alternate art cards from the EV Heroes. These items have more doubled in price since their initial release at $39.99. They are upwards of $99, which is more than double their retail costs initially. They have not been on the market for more than a calendar year. Some items like the Celebrations UPC are, in my opinion, probably the best way to start a sealed collection. If you were able to pick one up for retail around $119.99. Just the metal, the gold metal Charizard at pre-order was selling for over $200 with a graded gem mint PSA 10 selling in excess of $5,000. On a side note, PSA no longer accepts any of the Celebrations metal cards, so the values will, population will be even more scarce since PSA will no longer be accepting any of the metal cards. Well, I hope everyone liked this is part one of keeping Pokemon Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh! products sealed. I hope to make other installments in the future. Thank everyone for watching.